So let's talk a little bit about um, living in the now and uh, the ego. Now, basically, what happened is when we you know, when we created this whole scenario, which is basically what is it like? What would it be like to live in the lower vibrations in amnesia, utilizing the time space scenario? That's what the the game is. That's what you came for. You came for a game. And I want y'all to understand that where you came from is perfect. You have everything you want. It's perfection. Mm. Nothing is is wrong with anything. Of course, nothing's wrong with anything anywhere. Okay. But what the game is that uh, most people came to have this experience was to forget that you're a God, not live in perfection, and experience the lower vibrations. And the lower vibrations uh, generally don't feel good. They don't feel as good, right? So when we came into amnesia, there's still ways that this whole thing was designed over uh, a long time of experience and changing things. And you're having a bad dream, Inca. Don't have a bad dream. A little cold in here. Put a cover on. So basically, this is the way that it worked. As a creator God, living in the now moment, what you do is you uh, guide your experience through an innate knowingness by being collected to the all that is. And that's how you basically exist outside of this creation. When you came into this creation in amnesia, you... Um, experiencing the lower vibrations where well, your natural tendency as a god is to live in the now uh, be in a blissful state go from experience to experience within that blissful state being guided by that all-knowingness so we're going to take away um, the all-knowingness and you the the idea here is to stay in the lower vibrations so you don't want to remember that you're god you don't want to um, be blissfully happy because that's not what the goal is. The goal is to not do those things. And you, you want to live outside of uh, the now moment so that you can truly experience the physicality of being a human being in the fourth, third dimension, which was what most of you have been in most of your lives. And so this was the way that this was accomplished. Well, we didn't want just all of us just being out there in the wind with no backup plan at all, besides all of the entities and beings that are around you that help you through this game, which you don't realize that they're there and uh, you're not aware of them most of the time. And you do have that support, but still you are a creator God. So what was created what was what we call the ego. And the ego is that little voice in your head. And I tell people, whenever you're in a situation, there is a very tiny voice. The first voice that happens instantaneously, that is your God self, your higher self, your connection to source. But very quickly, right after that, you're going to have a second tiny voice. And that is your egoic uh, voice. And your ego was brought into place to help protect you in this human uh, skin, this human bodysuit for you to have this experience because you're here as a God in this human body suit, walking through time and space, the illusion of time and space without your normal guidance system. So the ego was created. And what the ego does is the ego collects data from this illusionary time and space. So it collects data from the past. It correlates that data, accesses this data all the time, and then it uses it to prepare or plan for the future. So your higher self and your, your God self, your self that is tied to source, the closest to who you really are is that tiny voice that is in the now always who never thinks or talks about the past or the future. Your egoic self is the one that collects data from the past, prepares for the future. So if you're listening to the tiny voice, you're confused about who is who in your head, because it can get confusing at times. 
the tiny voice that is your higher self tied to source, it is the first thing that talks to you, the first thing. But whether or not you're listening or not, you might have not been listening, so you might not know if you missed that first tiny voice. Because the ego has to, even as fast as it is, and it's very fast, it still is going to collect and go through that data in order to make an assessment for your plans for the future, whether that is which shoes to wear or what job to have in 10 years. Whichever way it goes, that's what the ego is doing. Now, to raise your vibration, head to 5D, uh, well, whatever it is your, your, your plans are, then if you're going to go in that route, then you want to listen more closely to your higher self and that instant voice that is basically doing everything, answering every question in the now from the now's perspective. And it will always um, answer any questions that you have from that perspective and answers it in that perspective that this is what you do now, now always in the now. Your ego is the one that will talk to you and want you to go back in time and it'll draw attention to, well, okay, we'll use a boyfriend here. Okay, the, here's a new boyfriend possibility that you've got in front of you. The ego will look at this new boyfriend, how he's talking, how he's acting, um, his history, whatever you can find out. It'll be collecting data on this guy and it will be matching it with the data that it's collected over all of this time. So you may have somebody that's in front of you and go, okay, checklist, really nice guy. Um, he has a job. He is nice to his mother. He, whatever, you collect data and there's all this good stuff. And then all of a sudden he says something that the ego can match with a bad boyfriend and the ego will say, wait, wait, wait. He might be like that guy. You might not want to date him. Do you get my picture here? So the ego is the one that's always going and it's going to be drawing your attention to the past. And your ego is always going to want you to be um, preparing for the future. That's what the ego does. This isn't a bad thing. This is a, a good thing. The ego is a great thing. However, if you're going to go to 5D, if you're going to raise your vibration and go to 5D, then you're going to come out of space time and the ego operates in space time so that you're going to have to start relying on that now moment, higher self connected to source uh, part of yourself and not so much on the egoic time space and, and part of yourself. So you want to start being able to tell the difference between these two little tiny voices in your head. And as you're going to 5D, uh, 3D is based on fear. So it's collecting all of this data and planning to keep you safe or make you successful in the fear that you won't be successful, trying to protect you from things that have happened in the past that were not good or collecting data that was good, that did work, that will help you be successful because it's afraid you won't be. So because there's no fear in 5D, then your ego is going to dissipate. It's, it's, going, to, uh, it's going to go away. So you need to be able to have your experience walk through day to day without your ego. And this is how you do it. And this is how you can tell the difference between them in that your, your ego is all about the past and the future. It does not live in the now and your higher self and your source connection is in the now moment. When you're in 5D, you stay in the now moment. Even if you are in the 5D and you're uh, living using time space. You can exist in time space and operate through it with a day being 24 hours and a year being 365 days. You can do all of that, but it will be um, moment to moment. You'll be living in the now while you do it. And in that process over time, of course, as you raise your vibration in 5D, then eventually you can step outside of time space and back in any way that you want to. Okay. So whenever you're trying to discern uh, now between that higher self and that egoic uh, tiny voice, then that's how you're going to do it. And you want to start 
uh, kind of taking control of the situation and letting your ego know, be very grateful to the ego for protecting you all this time. It's done a superb job. The ego is a stupendous part of all of us. But it is now time for the, the majority of the control to not be from an egoic standpoint, but rather a higher self, source-related, um, God-like perspective in the now moment. So you want to start making that transition so that there's less egoic, um, ex living things from the egoic perspective and more from the in the now perspective. And that we've heard about for a long time. That's that living in the now has been around, that teaching has been around for a very, very long time. But this is a good way of telling, and I've heard a lot of people say, how can I tell what, how can I tell if I'm speaking to my higher self? And that instant knowingness. Now also with your higher self, there's, it's, it's not only does it respond to the questions immediately, but there is just an a complete knowingness of the situation. The answer will be given to you in a complete knowingness, whether the, whether the, um, where the egoic answer will be explained. It will be, well, we think that you should do it, or I, we should do it this way, and we should do it this way because, and it'll start giving you examples from the past. Now, this happens very, very quickly, but it still will run through these reasons of why you should um, have a response in the future based on these events in the past, this data that was collected in the past. Therefore, this is the way that you should plan or respond in the future. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Okay. So hopefully that will help you discern which is which in that moment. And uh, you can move forward knowing the difference between those two tiny voices. Okie dokie. All right. Uh, huge hugs. I'll talk to you guys later. I love you so, so much. So bye-bye now.